surfs up. I love that phrase. It's another way of saying the waves are firing. If you don't get on it now, you miss out big time. It reminds me of a phrase in the Bible, today salvation has come to you. If this Bible phrase were being translated for surfers, probably it would say, salvation's up. Which means, God wants to do something in your life. He is ready to do it. So stop wasting your time and don't miss this amazing opportunity. Let God do it now. When I became a Christian, my friend gave me his board. On it were the words, radically saved. I didn't know what those words meant totally, but I knew it was true of me. I remember one of my buddies asking me, saved from what? I didn't know how to answer, because I hadn't yet learned to put into words what had happened. But since then, I have. So I'll try to explain it to you. Salvation's a big word but it's the most important thing that could ever happen to you. I'll never forget the day I bought a board and a wetsuit and dived into a swimming pool and started to practice duck diving and set my heart to surfing for the rest of my life. Well, at least for the next while. I experienced a transformation of identity. I once was, well, not a surfer and now I was becoming a surfer. I've never stopped thinking of myself as a surfer since that day. I stepped into another category of being. A non-surfer became a surfer. I remember the thrill of buying my first surfer mag and thinking to myself, that's me, I'm a surfer now. In the same way, salvation is a transformation of identity. Before it happened, I was far from God. And then when it happened, I was near to God. Before I was an orphan in the universe, a piece of jellyfish floating in the sea. And then salvation happened and I became a child of God. It was a total shift in identity. I stepped into another category of being. An unsaved surfer became a saved surfer. There's a verse in the Bible that says, the moment we're united to Christ, we become a new creation. There is a radical change that happens. The old is gone. The new has come. Let me tell another story from the world of surfing that illustrates the power of identity shift. Led Hamilton, the father of towing surfing, as a little boy had no dad. He was, in his own words, longing for a father figure. Then along came Billy Hamilton, one of the most respected surfers on the North Shore. One day Billy met and married his mom and adopted him, Led, as his own son. Suddenly, little Laird went from being a little fatherless boy who felt so misplaced on the North Shore to being Billy's kid. That identity shift set him up to succeed. God is the greatest and most wonderful father. He wants to adopt us and love us so that we can have a solid, stable, life-giving identity on which to build our lives. We get to be God's children. Unlike Billy, who only had a stake on the North Shore, the Heavenly Father runs and owns the whole world, including every square inch of sea and every stretch of coast there is. When I first trusted in Christ, I had no dad myself. He had died six months before. But I soon discovered that God himself had adopted me as his own kid, and he loved me and accepted me and had plans for my life. I can't explain how much it changed my life knowing that God was my father and I was his son and that he was for me. It gave me such security, confidence and a deep happiness. Some parts of surfing cost us. Think about wetsuits and boards and sun cream and fuel to get to places. But the best parts of surfing such as the sunshine and the beauty and of course the waves, they cost us nothing, they are free. Other forces create these things, we simply enjoy them. Consider the sunshine, 
emanating from that gigantic ball of gas we call the sun millions of miles away. And then ponder the waves generated by powerful fetch winds from deep sea storms thousands of miles away. The sun and the sea storms, they do the work. They expend the energy, they pay the price. We simply enjoy the benefits of the warmth on our bodies and the waves under our boards. Again, there is a striking parallel. Salvation is totally free. We cannot earn it any more than we can earn a wave or a ray of sunlight. Salvation comes to us by sheer grace. We don't deserve it, and yet it comes to us. And though it is free, it comes at a cost. But not a cost we pay. 2,000 years ago, the cross of Christ became like a burning ball of gas, and from it emanated rays of salvation that are accessible to all. And 2,000 years ago, the cross of Christ became a massive deep sea storm that generated an eternity long ground swell of salvation that has been arriving on the coastline of our lives ever since. I remember the day of my salvation. I was on a surf camp. And after a crazy day of surf and traveling and messing around with buddies, we sat down and Roy spoke about how we're all sinners who need a savior and how Jesus is the best savior there ever was and how he wants to save us if we'll let him. Well, it made perfect sense and it still does. That night I prayed a prayer. I prayed, Jesus, I believe you really are the son of God who died for my sins. I'm sorry for being a sinner. I can't save myself. Only you can save me. So save me. Forgive me. Make me a child of God. I trust in you. Help me to get to know you better. Help me to follow you. Amen. And in that moment, I paddled into a wave that's still going and will keep on going forever and ever.